special request. We'll be asking, what is the professor doing with rocks in class? Well, there's a special purpose to this. I'm going to pass this around. And the instruction is, take as many as you want to as few as you want, to as little as zero if you need to, or want to. And, but give everybody an opportunity to take before you take the whole bag. Here's a caveat. You're going to have to take these with you today. So whenever you're going to lunch or on break, you're going to have to carry them with you. You have to have them in your possession. That's the only thing I ask. And then we'll kind of finish this up later. So I'm going to pass this along and then everyone gets a chance to take, like I said, from zero to as many as you want, as long as everyone gets an opportunity to take some. Okay? Alright. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you two stories. I, I hope to make them brief enough so that we can get into the content before we actually uh, move forward. But the stories pertain to, well, one of them I'm going to call, uh, I usually switch back and forth every single time I tell the stories between men and women. Uh, this time I'm going to go ahead and do women. Why not? Hey. Um, <laughs> and then I tell the other story about the teacher and the student. And I typically switch gender so too. So let's go ahead and do uh, three women and an angel as one story. And let's go ahead and do a story about uh, let's call let's let's look for a male teacher's name. Bob. Bob. Bob the teacher. <laughs> and let's look for a female student's name. Bob. Lisa. Lisa. Bob and Lisa. All right, great. So I'm going to tell you a little story about Bob and Lisa. Bob is, of course, a teacher at a middle school. And he, has, he loves his job. And he does it on a regular basis. And he really enjoys what he does. And Lisa is one of, her, one of his students. And Lisa does go to college, or does go to school all the time, does her work. And, Lisa's actually moving on into seventh grade and she does well and so forth. But every single day at the end of class, Bob goes to everybody in the class and says, no matter what, whatever happens, no matter what, don't quit. Don't give up. No matter what. That was his motto every single day, every single class every single activity or every single you know sign or whatnot it was his body it was what he enjoyed doing he had a passion for what he did and it showed and it stuck with Lisa and she keeps going to school and she's going on to eighth grade by now except now Lisa's getting a little bit of trouble Join the bad little girls club and she's getting into a little bit of trouble. She's doing some bad things, staying out, uh, not going to class, skipping class or skipping school altogether or whatnot. The parents are getting frustrated with, you know, trying to help her out and making her kind of move over. She goes into high school. Now she's really getting serious. Now she's starting to use alcohol and she's getting really bad and she's not going to school like she used to. Just is going by, going through the motions, and she's hung out with the wrong crowd. But now she's even starting to do drugs, tough drugs. She's still passing along, still getting by somehow, but she's not doing as well as she used to. She's already a high school senior, and her parents are getting a divorce, and she's feeling the weight of the world and the family and everything really getting on top of her. She's stressed, she's angry, she's frustrated, she's everything that a young teenage woman would be. 
all of a sudden, she just has a moment of just death. She's sad. So sad that she thinks life isn't worth it. And she takes and does uh, the unthinkable. She decides that she wants to go ahead and take her life. So she does. She, she goes to the restroom, does the, the motions, and is taking her life. And as she's lying on the ground or on the floor, she realizes that there's this nagging voice in the back of her head. No matter what happens to you, don't ever give up, don't ever quit. That teacher's voice in the back of her head came out. She stopped. She stops. She thinks about it and she says, you know what? I'm not going to quit. She immediately calls for help and gets the help she needs. Let me go ahead and tell the other story. The other story was three women and an angel, right? Yes. So there are these three young women who are going to have, well, one of them is getting married. Let's call each one. Let's, let's name each one. Why not? Let's, let's name the three. What names do we get? Anna. Anna's one. Anybody else got any other names? Paula. Paula. Brittany. And Brittany. I'll forget these. Paula Brittany. And I have a terrible habit. That's why I do never thought about it. I thought about it very well. We need to listen to us. We need to tag in this. Nay, nay. Nay, so let's just for a second say that Anna is the one that's getting married, and Brittany and Paula are her two best friends, and they decide to go and do a girls' night out before. That's yeah. never good. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, good. Yeah. 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 Going in the bad direction, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so they go off and they drive and they drive to Las Vegas and <coughs> the whole spiel of. Vegas, and what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And, and so they end up driving back home. And they're driving, and of course, Vegas is in the middle of the desert. desert, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so they're driving, and all of a sudden their car breaks out in the middle of highway. And it's a lonely road out there. It's a very lonely road. And so they're having to think about should we go get help or should we wait for a car to pass by? You know, Oh. And Brittany says, no, well, let, let, let's go in that direction. I think that town, you see that town over there? And so the three of them get off the car and they all start walking. They start walking through the desert to this town. And all of a sudden that town, as they start getting closer, it starts disappearing. And you start realizing it's not a town, it's just a mirage. <laughs> so they start getting closer and closer and they're, they're kind of tired. They're hungry, they're thirsty by this time. And they decide to take a break. It's a little treat. They decide to take a little break. The three of them sit down, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this angel appears in front of them. And they start talking to one another, and they start engaging in conversations about life, about all the sort of questions they want to have and talk about. They want to, they want to, Q and A back and forth about sort of what they should think this is and how life works and how family works and how kids work and how relationships work and they you know, want all that the answers to all those questions. And right before they decide they're going to kind of press on and go forward, uh, Paula says. Well, before you go, can you, can you tell me what's the one thing I need to know? What do I, what should I know? 
What should I do? And the angel says, look, look at the ground. You see the ground? And they all look down and they all say, okay. And the angel says, I want you to pick up as many pebbles on the ground as you can. And I want you to take them to the next town. And then they say, wait a second, but wh where's the town? Where are we going? And the angel points in that direction. And the three of them, of course, turn out to me. And then by the time they turn back, the angel's gone. And so Brittany says, I'm not going to pick up any pebbles. That's silly. Why am I going to pick up pebbles? And Paul says, well, he is an angel. I'll pick up one. And Brittany, of course, goes in there and starts picking up a whole bunch. And she's like putting, stuffing her pockets and saying, OK, I'm going to pick up a whole bunch. So they all start walking. Start walking, and we start walking to, to the town. But they now see it's very good. They know they're hungry, they're thirsty, and they know they don't have any money. They spent it all in Vegas. You know how that happens. <laughs> so they arrive at town, and they're trying to figure out what are they going to do. Right? And as soon as they arrive, they're like, "Well, we need to, we need to start doing something." We have to call somebody. We have to get to them. We have to do something. And so uh, Paula reaches into her pocket, and she's kind of like, that's a diamond. That's a diamond. Look, guys. The pebble turned into a diamond. And then Brittany immediately starts going into her pockets, and then she starts pulling out She's got diamonds, rubies, jewels, all these precious jewels. And then all of a sudden, I ah, pulls her. And she realizes, oh, I didn't pick up any. What these two stories tell us together is that every day you come to class is an opportunity to pick up as many pebbles as you can might be just a mere fact, a factoid, it might be uh, some case, it might be some statistic, it might be something, you know, whatever it is, it's an opportunity for you to pick up pieces of information that might be useful to you. They might be meaningless at the moment, worthless at the moment, but just like that teacher's saying to that student, Lisa, in a moment of dire need, that don't quit, don't ever quit, don't ever stop story, became a diamond for her when she most needed. And for you, as administrators, this is going to be your opportunity. Every class, and I know you're at the tail end of your programs for the most part, but every class is an opportunity for you to pick up pebbles worthless, meaningful, meaningless, pebbles, right, worthless. But maybe you might be in a meeting one of these days, and you're with colleagues, or you're with coworkers, or you're with administrators, and those meaningless facts, or those meaningless legal cases that you thought were unimportant, or those statistics that you thought were meaningless, become useful. You and your committee, or you and your faculty, or you and your administration, or your staff, and it becomes important. Something to share, something to do, something meaningful with. Take it as an opportunity. Every day you go to any class, take it as an opportunity. Okay? At the end of today, we're going to get a chance to actually practice the pubs. So let's kind of go in and talk about what the content is for today. That, that was uh, that was pretty deep, Doctor. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it was meant to actually elicit a response. <laughs> Dr. Pete. Dr. Sorry. Pete. I couldn't respond because I was looking at these like, are they diamonds? Like, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, my pocket's like, you never know, they might turn into diamonds tonight or later on, right? You know what? I thought Pete was going to deliver. Like, but you have to carry them and not go right to the pawn shop. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when you asked us to pick the pebbles, I was thinking of my kids, so I picked three pebbles that look similar, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm here to make a difference in the next generation of learners mm -hmm. in my family. I'm yeah. trying to encourage them to get a higher education, to be someone. And I have three boys, and it's hard to find an African American yeah. in, in college with a degree, no criminal record, mm -hmm. you know, so when I pick my pebbles, that's what I was thinking of. That's, that's for my that's boys. Time, that's for wow. my boys, so they know. Let's do it. Yeah, that's what I'm about. Take what you want from that story, or from those two stories. Use the power of the one. Okay. 